There's nothing cooler than a huge subwoofer, except maybe a tiny subwoofer. These compact subwoofers right here are all over YouTube right now, and everyone's heaping a ton of praise on them. B2 Audio sent out a pair, and we're gonna see if they live up to the hype. You're also gonna learn a few things about how passive radiators work, so sit back and enjoy. Why a passive radiator? Well, because the YouTube ecosystem is completely saturated with these things right here and no one's made a PR version, so I figure you deserve something different. Why is the ecosystem saturated? My guess is that B2 is sending them out to anybody that has a following. More on that later. Dropping the parameters into WinISD, the first thing you're gonna notice is that the parameters pass the driver integrity check. Some brands never seem to pass the driver integrity check. The fact that B2 took the time to provide accurate TS parameters for a subwoofer that's really more of a gimmick than an actual subwoofer speaks volumes about B2's commitment to making a quality product. Yeah, you heard me, this thing is a gimmick. More on that in a bit. Jumping back into WinISD to look at the design, first of all, you can build a ported enclosure with more low frequency extension. There's probably a reason no one has used a passive radiator design. It turns out this driver is ill-suited for a passive radiator design. But I'm stubborn, I'm bullheaded, I'm going to do it anyways. With a passive radiator, the standard rule is that the PR needs to move twice the air as the active driver. In this case here, a single passive is more than enough to do that for two of these little subwoofers. But there's always a but. To tune a passive radiator, you have to add mass to the back. And that means there's really no limit to how low you can tune a passive. You just keep adding weight. But there is a limit to how high you can tune a passive because there's a limit to the amount of weight that you can remove. The cone itself has mass and you can't remove the cone. And it turns out that the cone on this single passive radiator is too heavy. The solution is to add a second one. So now we're deep into an absurdly stupid idea and I don't see any reason to change course. Why not just charge ahead and waste some money and buy two of these things instead of one. For the box itself, it's a simple square box. I'm going to cut it on the CNC mostly because I need to cut four small circles and it's easier and faster to cut four small circles on a CNC than it is to set it up on a router. Plus, it makes it very easy to cut some rabbits to make assembly easier. Later, I'll show you what I'm talking about later on in the video. This particular CNC machine is a Shapeoko 5 Pro. I'll be sure to give you a link to the CNC down below if you want to check it out. Now, just a minute ago, I called this subwoofer a gimmick. Sorry to hurt your feelings, B2. It's probably rude to say that after you sent me out two of these things. And sorry to contradict almost all of the YouTubers who have tried these out. This is a gimmick. This is more decoration than anything else. It was designed to use in remote control cars. Apparently there's a whole community of people out there that build hyper-realistic RC cars. B2 saw a gap in the market and they made a hyper-realistic replica of a big full-sized giant subwoofer. And it's definitely that. I'm very impressed with the attention to detail. It's a one-tenth scale replica. So if you size it up to a normal subwoofer, this would be a 20-inch driver. And of course, at that small size, it's just physically incapable of moving the air needed to be a real subwoofer. Having said that, though, this thing is a work of art, and it was clearly designed to be shown off. So my box is going to have a plexiglass top so you can see the cool magnet and basket. Or maybe not. The tricky part about any kind of plastic on a CNC, you have to get the bit speed and feed rate just right so you don't melt the material. I'm going to have to spend some time off camera sorting that out, but I just screwed up my only sheet of plexiglass and so we're going to have to settle for a wooden top. That's just the way these things go sometimes. Nothing ever turns out perfect. During the assembly process, you can see why I decided to buy the CNC machine to cut these rabbit joints. Makes it really easy to put everything together. Yes, you can do all this work with a router, but it's a lot more time consuming. If you'd like to see a full review of this CNC machine, let me know down in the comments. I might make the video if enough of you are interested. You may notice that I'm not working out in the garage. It's the winter time and it's too cold for the glue to cure. So when that happens, you're going to need to move inside. For a small project like this, you can just tape everything up and set it aside and wait a day for the glue to cure. Twenty four hours later. For the finish, I'm shooting for something really bright and really vibrant and really annoying. To do that, I'm going to mix some green unicorn spit in with some water based poly.
After it dries, it'll have a chalky finish. So just hit it with a coat of the same water-based poly and it'll start to shine. This will turn out a lot better if you'll use a high quality plywood like Baltic Birch. This is some cheap sandy ply that I got from Home Depot. I used it because I just happen to have it on hand at the moment. These are four ohm drivers, so you can wire two of them to an eight ohm load or a two ohm load. To figure out how to do that, you can head over to DIYAudioGuy.com and check out the resistance calculator. And after you do that, you can wire it all together and screw it all down. If you use half inch material like this, you'll want to put a lip on the inside of those speaker cutouts or recess the drivers. It's a bit of a tight fit to get these things into the cutouts. You'll rub up against the speaker wire connectors and that lip will help you kind of finesse it into the hole. While that's happening, I want to take a second to thank all of my patrons and my channel members for their support. $10 and up patrons get their name on the screen right down here below us. And $25 and up patrons like Jonathan, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo get a big shout out in the video. If you enjoy this type of content, head over to Patreon today. You can get a 10% discount if you sign up for an entire year at once. Okay, it's all together. How does it sound? Let's grab some test gear and give it a go. All right, here is the test setup. I've got a measurement mic hooked up to Room EQ Wizard. I'm gonna run a sweep. I got the mic really close to the speaker for a thing called a near field measurement. That's the best way to measure a speaker in a room. With the mic up close to the speakers, there's less chance for external reflections and noise from the room to influence the results. <laughs> For this test, I'm just looking at frequencies below 200 hertz since this thing is marketed as a subwoofer. What we get is a flat response between 100 and 200 hertz. And then below 100 hertz, we get a rapid roll off. Don't put a lot of weight on that roll off. My test setup's not perfect. My laptop does roll off low frequencies through the headphone output. I'm currently looking for an audio interface so that I can give you more accurate test results. As far as the sound goes, playing from my phone, which does have a full range output, yeah, it sounds better than I expected. It does dig down low and play bass frequencies, but it's not particularly loud. My subjective assessment, the sound quality is better than I expected. I still would not call it a subwoofer, it's more of a wideband driver. You could pair this with a small tweeter and have a two-way system. It does work in the sense that it does play music. It looks cool and it's fun and it's easy to pump in some low frequencies to get that cone moving. And I like this setup that I built right here because the passives mean you have two more cones and it's fun to watch those cones move. We'll talk more about how passive radiators work, so keep watching. Now if you showed up at a car show with an RC car with a pair of these in the trunk, it would be visually impressive. You would get a lot of attention and it would of course play music, but it's not a subwoofer. Again, it's kind of a gimmick. This is something you buy because of the looks. Now B2 Audio seems to be pushing these things really hard. They sent them out to a ton of YouTubers. Originally these things were 80 bucks. They've knocked 20 bucks off the price. After doing all that marketing and discounting the price, they appear to be out of stock. I'll give you a link down in the video description in case they ever come back in stock. And since they're out of stock, I don't feel guilty recommending an alternative product. So there's no alternative if you're just trying to look cool, but there are probably better choices if you care about the sound. You can head over to Pars Express where they have a three and a half inch tang band subwoofer. Again, I wouldn't call it a real subwoofer, but it's got more cone area and more X max. So it's got a better shot at hitting the low notes. Also Parts Express sells drivers that look exactly like the passive radiators. They've got a two and a half inch version, just a little bit more cone area. So it should perform a little bit better. Plus this thing is under 20 bucks. Again, not a real subwoofer. To learn more about those passive radiators, click right here. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.